The F-35 Lightning II may have had a troubled developmental phase, but since finally coming online in 2015 for the United States Marine Corps, 2016 for the Air Force, and 2019 for the Navy, the fighter has evolved into a fine platform that has lived up to its hype. This fifth-generation aircraft boasts stealth, maneuverability, and nearly unparalleled situational awareness through sensor fusion and its advanced avionics. The plane is also far more economical to operate than its fifth-generation counterpart, the F-22 Raptor, which means it can be fielded in large numbers. Over 975 F-35 Lightning IIs have been delivered as of October 2023, and the Pentagon plans to have over 2,400 of them in service by 2044. Now, the F-35 is getting another upgrade, called the Block 4. What is this upgrade and how will it make the Lightning II an even more capable aircraft? Many of the details are naturally classified, but let's take a dive into the murky deeps of the Pentagon's secret programs and see what we can find out. What we do know is that Defense Department officials plan for the Block 4 upgrade to retrofit to all variants of the F-35, which have been delivered since 2017. F-35s delivered in 2016 or earlier will be incompatible, but since the vast majority of the planes have come after that date, almost the entirety of the fleet will be able to benefit from Block 4. Meanwhile, the F-35 aircraft yet to come off the assembly line will all come with Block 4 updates installed in the manufacturing process. $16.5 billion is being spent on Block 4, making it a high-priority item for the Pentagon. The Block 4 package includes over 75 hardware and software upgrades to the F-35. The Block 4 upgrades must be handled delicately, especially in the hardware department. Stealth aircraft like the F-35 are the product of careful design down to the minutest detail. Any disruption to this design, no matter how small, could result in the aircraft losing its stealth attributes. While the F-35 was a platform designed to be adaptable, far more so than its predecessor the F-22, its first prototype rolled out in 2006. Many changes in technology and American military doctrine have taken place since that year. To put the question of adaptability into perspective, the sixth-generation plane the Air Force has in development, the next-generation air dominance fighter, NGAD, is being designed from the start with the idea of open architecture in mind, where new technologies and features can be easily attached to the airframe. The F-35, while adaptable, is not that adaptable. So the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps will need to be careful with how they install the new upgrades onto their fifth-generation fighter. One of the most important parts of the Block 4 upgrades is the computing change called Technology Refresh 3 TR3. The TR3 suite includes modernization to the F-35's core processor, memory unit, panoramic cockpit display system, and avionics. The brass expects TR3 to have at least 25 times more computing power than the previous TR2 system. Crucially, TR3 also shifts the F-35's computing system to an open architecture design, which will make future updates easier to install. The better computer architecture will make the system more resilient in the face of stress and more capable of self-diagnosing problems to better ensure aircraft maintenance. It helps to know exactly what is wrong with the plane, since it saves time and money on repairs. The TR3 will be capable of relaying that information. TR3 is the backbone of the Block 4 F-35, designed to support the other upgrades. One of them is a new Active Electronically Scanned Array AESA radar, the ANAPG-85 designed by Northrop Grumman. The new radar will replace the current ANAPG-81 designed by the same company. Although the details are naturally classified, the new radar will likely have longer range, higher resolution, superior simultaneous tracking, and better electronic warfare capabilities. Jamming or degrading enemy radars will likely also be easier with an ANAPG-85. These features are all thanks to the new radar being based on a gallium nitride GAN semiconductor system. These semiconductors make for longer range detection while staying at the same size and weight as older hardware. The F-35 will also become more sensitive thanks to Block 4's improved Distributed Aperture System DAS, and Electro-Optical Targeting System EOTS. In 2018, Lockheed Martin, the F-35's primary contractor, hired Raytheon to build better cameras to create a superior DAS. The next version of the Lightning II's DAS would improve the pilot's situational awareness. The DAS consists of cameras positioned around the aircraft to provide a 360-degree field of view. This information then comes through to the display in the pilot's helmet. The pilot can therefore see what's happening behind the aircraft and to its sides all simultaneously. 
The new DAS has five times the reliability and twice the performance of the older one. The F-35's EOTS, meanwhile, is integrated into the plane's fuselage and protected by a durable sapphire window. From there, fiber optics link it with the aircraft's central computer. The Block 4 EOTS will incorporate upgrades that include improved image detector resolution, shortwave infrared, an infrared marker, and even high-definition television. The end result is that the Block 4 F-35 will increase the pilot's recognition and provide longer-range target detection. Lockheed Martin estimates that the new and improved EOT system alone will save more than $1 billion in the F-35's life cycle. And thanks to TR-3, the F-35 will be able to handle the amount of data that these new DAS and EOS systems will feed to the aircraft and pilot. Meanwhile, the new radar system and sensor suite not only further improves the pilot's situational awareness, but the plane's survivability. Through frequency hopping and waveform modulation, among other features, the F-35 can use its radar in certain settings without necessarily giving away its location to enemy radar systems. The better chances of survival and improved sensors give pilots more options when deciding how to handle enemy air defense systems. For example, the radar might reveal an enemy air defense system nearby without giving the F-35's position away. The pilot can then decide whether to attack it, abort the mission, or bypass the system if the aircraft's stealth seems to be holding. The F-35's cockpit display is also getting an upgrade with Block 4. The new system will be designed to be adaptable to the heavy amount of information the improved computer and sensors will bring to the pilot's attention. The upgraded display should have five times better performance than the old one, and to increase resilience, there will be independent processes for the left and right cockpit displays. This means that if one fails, the other will still be available. Improving the F-35's electronic warfare capability is a major objective for Block 4. We've mentioned this objective with the improved AESA radar system, and other sensors, but the upgrades go far beyond that. 20 electronic warfare receivers will be on the new F-35, 15 more than on the initial planes. The features will include new software and waveforms that would jam or confuse enemy electronic systems. The Block 4 features also build on the F-35's current ability to deploy ALE-55 towed decoys. These decoys are traditionally defensive in nature, as they can distract enemy missiles targeting the aircraft. However, the new versions of these towed decoys have an offensive nature as well. When deployed, the F-35's decoys can strike back electronically at the enemy's radars and electronic warfare assets locked onto the main airframe. The F-35 carries several of these decoys in carefully concealed panels so as not to disrupt the plane's stealth profile. The Block 4 upgrades also go well beyond electronic warfare, situational awareness, and sensor fusion in the skies. The improvements intend to make the F-35 something akin to a flying and combat-capable command and control center. The new electronic features will make working with other systems easier for the F-35 pilots, enabling what the brass calls long-range kill webs. This will mean an all-domain and all-asset integration to improve combined arms approaches to warfare. For example, in the current setup, one F-35 can spot a target and another F-35, perhaps one in a better position, can attack it without having to spot the target on its own. This capability will expand with the Block 4 updates. In the future, an F-35 might be able to spot a target and seamlessly send the information to a HIMARS system on the ground, which would then open fire on it. Perhaps the new and improved F-35 would be able to control the HIMARS system itself in the process. In addition to expanding the information available for both air and ground assets to act on, the kill web would help to maintain the F-35's stealth profile since it would not necessarily need to open its weapons bays to send a missile downrange. An MLRS rocket, ATAC-M's missile, or the coming replacement for the ATAC-M's, the 500km precision strike missile, would do the job just as well, or maybe better, depending on the target. The new kill web capability would therefore present the possibility for simultaneous attacks from land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace, overwhelming enemy defenses and decision-making. In such a confused state, the enemy would invite the possibility of even more attacks, as F-35 pilots use their unparalleled access to information to seek out more targets of opportunity. But in case you thought that the upgrades were limited to electronic features only, don't. Block 4 will also make the F-35 capable of carrying 17 new weapons, most of them being new kinds of missiles, presumably with longer range than the plane's weapons currently has. This is an important upgrade. 
as China currently has access to longer-range air-to-air missiles such as the PL-15 than the United States does. Presumably, one of the new missiles for the Block 4 F-35 will be the hypersonic AIM-260 JAT-M, which will have a range of at least 200 kilometers and is being designed to counter the PL-15. There will also be a higher payload capacity with Block 4. An entirely new weapons bay is included in the upgrade. This weapons bay will increase the F-35's load from four to six missiles. This is an important modification, since many critics suggested that the F-35 would be of limited value with such a low payload capacity. The increase of two missiles might not sound like a lot at first, but the numbers add up when a squadron of F-35s operates together. In a hypothetical all-out air battle with a peer or near-peer competitor, the additional missiles will keep the F-35 in the fight for longer before it's forced to retreat to reload, and more ordnance will be flying through the skies towards targets on the ground, sea, or air. Meanwhile, because Block 4 will have greater power requirements, alterations to the F-35's engine will be needed to accommodate the changes, so an entirely different engine is on the menu. The new engine will need to both generate more power and better manage the heat that would come with this additional power demand. The F-35's current means of power and propulsion is the two-ton Pratt & Whitney F-135 turbofan engine, which generates 28,000 pounds of thrust. The thrust can increase to 43,000 pounds when the aircraft uses its afterburners. The F-135 can withstand temperatures up to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. However, incidents during the plane's development have suggested that the F-35 in its current form cannot handle heat as well as it should. For example, there is documentation that the sustained use of afterburners damages the plane's tail. The incidents in question occurred in 2011, and although they have reportedly not been replicated since, the Marine Corps and Navy have since quietly imposed a time limit on afterburner use to between 40 and 80 seconds. If not fixed, this lack of tolerance for heat will be a problem for the Block 4 version of the F-35, which will have even greater power requirements and generate even more heat than the current plane does. Pratt & Whitney is competing with General Electric to build the Block 4 F-35 engine, but it's still not known whether it will wind up being an evolutionary improvement over the current engine or a revolutionary replacement, an adaptive cycle engine. Adaptive cycle engines are smart engines. They adjust in flight for greater thrust or greater fuel efficiency, depending on the situation. Interestingly, aviation experts consider adaptive cycle engines as one of the features which will distinguish the coming sixth generation of jet fighters from their predecessors. For example, the Air Force's NGAD program, which saw its first flight test in 2020, boasts these engines as part of its inherent design. Now the Pentagon is exploring such an engine as a possible F-35 upgrade. It's arguable that the integration of an adaptive engine would make the Block 4 F-35 something like a fifth-generation-plus aircraft a plane that is above 5th generation, but still not quite yet 6th generation. Pratt & Whitney says this change is unnecessary for the F-35, and that it makes more sense to take an evolutionary approach for Block 4, one which would improve the Lightning II's thrust by 10%, range by 7%, and fuel efficiency by 5%. The company also claims that maintenance costs would go down by 36% once its new engine is installed, and the life cycle costs would be $40 billion less than if the Pentagon adopts the adaptive engine idea. Additionally, the evolutionary approach would save time in rolling Block 4 out. In a report for the competition over the Lightning II's new engine, Popular Mechanics quoted one defense official as saying, I'm not read in to all of Block 4. It's very closely guarded, but I've heard we're doing well in adaptive cycle engine development. My concern for the XA100 is the same as it is for so many other upgrades to the F-35. Integration. Personally, I would just upgrade the F-135s if it saves us years of development and integration, and if it does, I think that's the way the Department of Defense will go, especially since General Charles Brown, General David Berger and Admiral Mike Gilday, chiefs of the Air Force, Marine Corps and Navy respectively, aren't particularly wed to the F-35 like some of their predecessors have been. There are other ways we can compensate for the range efficiency we need that an adaptive cycle engine can give us. Pratt & Whitney's competitor, General Electric, is opting for the revolutionary approach. GE is the contractor building the engine for NGAD and has already completed testing of its adaptive engine prototype, the XA100. Supposedly, an engine like this would increase the Lightning II's fuel efficiency by 25%, range by 30 to 35%, and thrust by 10 to 20%. It would also absorb twice as much heat 
as the F-35's current engine. According to GE, the new engine would be seamlessly integrated into the F-35 by 2028, although some Defense Department officials are more modest and say it would come in 2031 at the earliest. The Pentagon has not yet come to a decision on which of the two engines would be better suited for the F-35, so we'll need to wait and see more of those details in the future. If speed is of the essence, then Pratt & Whitney may win out, but that's only speculation at this time. It's not been all smooth sailing to Block 4, however, as you might have expected with the F-35, which suffered through many years of developmental hell, the costs of the Block 4 upgrades have ballooned over their original price tag. According to the Government Accountability Office, the Block 4 package has grown by 55% over the $10.6 billion projection the Defense Department set in 2018, to a new total of $16.5 billion. Allegedly, this increase comes partly because the TR3 software suite has grown more capable, with 80 new capabilities compared to the originally planned 66. The source of this claim is the F-35 program's officials, but the GAO couldn't independently verify it because the details are classified. The first flight test of an F-35 with TR-3 installed came in January 2023. This was a year behind schedule because of earlier software instability. The GAO found that the test was not wholly satisfactory, as it uncovered new issues in the software. Nevertheless, the Air Force deemed the prototype successful enough to begin production in February. The first F-35 with the TR-3 software was scheduled for delivery in July. Given the F-35's long history of stunted development and the more recent and even bigger disaster of the Littoral Combat Ship program, it's understandable that the GAO and other watchdogs would worry about price and whether the aircraft is truly mission-ready. Thankfully, there have been no reports of technical difficulty with TR-3 so far. And for those worried about the costs, there is a silver lining. The shift to open architecture that comes with Block 4 will make it easier for new companies to design hardware and software upgrades to the F-35, ending the Air Force's current dependence on a few specific contractors. The increased competition should decrease the F-35's unit cost, so if Block 4 is expensive now, it might be better viewed as an investment that will make money back for the Air Force in the longer run. Although to be fair, we've heard that sort of thing before with less than stellar results. Time will tell. Specifically, we'll probably know in 12 years, since that's when the Pentagon expects the Block 4 upgrades to fully mature. By that time, the F-35 will likely be flying with the ANGAD and the Navy's sixth-generation fighter, the FAXX. Whether the Block 4 F-35 will be able to link up with these two new fighters and their associated drones remains unknown. But since drone swarm integration has been planned for the Lightning II since at least 2016, don't be surprised if it can. It would be more surprising if it couldn't. The brass believes that the upgrades for the F-35s are necessary, regardless of the cost. The same Defense Department official who commented on the F-35's new engines in the Popular Mechanics article has this to add about the necessity of getting Block 4 online quickly. Right now there's a growing sense of urgency in the USAF to get the ball rolling on F-35 Block 4 upgrades. If we were to go to war right now, I think a matchup between current F-35s and J-20s China's current operational stealth fighter would be uncomfortably close. I think we'll see some Block 4 upgrades be dropped or come out staggered and be integrated into earlier lots before the first all Block 4 production models come out in the latter part of this decade, hopefully. The F-35 is expected to remain operational until 2070, and the Block 4 upgrade is a key part of this mission for longevity. With the stakes in the race for air dominance getting higher, with China possibly fielding a fleet of 1,000 J-20s by 2030, Block 4 is a welcome addition to America's air capabilities at a time when there is a much greater demand for them. It's little wonder why it has become such a high-priority program for the Pentagon. But what do you think about the F-35's Block 4 program? How will it change the aircraft, and what do you expect to come from these upgrades? Don't forget to let us know in the comments. Also, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.